Hello, welcome. Today I have to talk to you about something. I have, I have to talk to you about something. Every time I go out and take pictures with a camera that does not have a light meter, there's always the same question. Which app are you using? And the other question is, how are you measuring the light? So today I'm going to tell you how I measure the light and which apps do I use. Now, please bear in mind, this is not the correct way of measuring light. This is not the best app for measuring light or anything. If you have a light meter lying around and, and you can use that, that's great, like props to you. But uh, I just wanna tell you what I do with my phone. So today I'll tell you how I measure the light, how I do it usually when I use cameras that do not have light meters. And yeah, that's the content of this video. Let's go. Let's get this out of the way immediately. The app that I use right now at this very moment is called AS Light Meter. Now, why do I use this app? Because it's free. That's, <laughs> that's the only reason why I use this app, really. It's not the best app, it's not the worst app, it's just an app. In my experience, all the labs for measuring light work exactly the same. That's it. There's no mystery, there's nothing magical. All apps for measuring light work the same. They depend on the camera on your phone. Now, I'm using this one, this is an iPhone 6S Plus. Um, I had an iPhone 4 before and it was basically the same thing. So for example, in here it says that in order to have a right exposure, I need to expose for two seconds at 100 ISO at f5.6. If you have 1600 at f4, you're gonna need 15 of, 1 15th of a second to make this happen. Anyway, that's how it works. That's the basic function. This kind of apps usually work way better when you're doing it a broad daylight or a little bit of shadows but for interiors they sometimes get dizzy and they don't give you like the exact reading so uh i have trusted these apps like so much and <laughs> before and then i realized that for interiors they don't really work and my pictures get underexposed so i would not completely trust them on dark interiors uh, but that's because the camera from the phone is not really good so there are many, many light meters for your phone. Uh, some of them are cheap, some of them are more expensive, some of them will look more professional. This particular one that I'm using is free and it was, I don't know, it works well so far. So my personal advice, if I can recommend you something, do not overpay for something. Do not overpay for an app for measuring with your phone. Uh, if you really, really, really wanna measure, and you want to spend money in that, you can buy a light meter, but they're expensive. Besides, you don't really need another gadget on you. You already have your camera, you have your films, you probably have a backpack in which you have all your stuff, you have your keys, your wallet, your phone, and you want to put like a light meter on top of that, I think that's a little bit too much. So that's the reason why I always use my phone as a light meter, because I always have my phone with me. So why not use it as a light meter and then just use one less gadget? That's my reason. Usually all light meters for phone work the same. So it's not like you're gonna find comparable and amazing differences between one and the other. Uh, it's just for measuring light, man. That's pretty much it. Now regarding the second question, how do I measure lights? And why do I usually do <laughs> this gesture, which looks so weird? Well, this is the reason. My skin tone, of course, is not like I'm not super white and I'm not black either. So my skin tone is kind of neutral. What I do is I take the measure of my skin tone and then I know that anybody who has more or less my same skin tone will measure exactly the same. So what I do is I go on the street and I measure my hand. And if my hand says, for example, let's, let's, let's play the game for full. Let's go to the app and say, okay, at ISO 800, I'm gonna need uh, 1 30th of a second at F2. So if I know that I'm on the shadows, uh, I'm on the shades, I mean, and if I go on the extreme light, it's gonna say, you know, some other reading. And then I remember those two readings. And whenever I'm walking on the street and I see somebody, I notice if that's, that person's gonna go like under a tree or, in, in some kind of shade situation, or it's gonna be on like full daylight. And I already know the readings because I measure them with my hand. So I don't need to be around measuring everything. Why do I do this? The reason is quite simple. And it's because I am not really interested in measuring for the whole scene. Because usually when you take a measure of the whole scene, you get like, if it's broad daylight, you get the readings from the buildings and the cars and the pavement and all of that is really bright. Um, but if you take measurement from that, usually the skin tones tend to be darker than the, like the reflecting buildings or the cars or the pavement. So I measure my skin 
and then I expose everything for my skin because I am measuring everything for people's skin. So I usually walk around with my cameras. This is, this is the real normal scenario. I'm walking around with my camera and then I decide to take some pictures. I take off my phone, I measure my hand, I remember the readings, and then I just walk around with my camera the rest of the situation. Unless the light changes, I already know what to do because I have the two readings. I know for shadows and I know for daylight. And that's all I need to know. If somebody is in the middle or if I'm in the shadows and I want to take a picture of something who's like going in between one and the other, I have to make a decision of what do I want to change. Usually the fastest way to do that, at least with the Leica, is to do it with the f-stop over here. And the reason is the shutter speed are okay, but you need to move them and be very aware of where you are. And I have more clear muscle memory of where this area is, because I know this f2 and then should be f4, right? Yeah. So that's how it works. I just grab the camera and I know, okay, this is here and probably I'm on f8 now. Yeah, I'm on f8. It's just muscle memory. You have to know your camera. If you don't remember how your camera feels, it'll be very difficult for you to actually take pictures like I'm saying. You need to know how your camera is set up. If, if you go to f11, you're like, okay, I'm going to change to f2 as soon as something interesting happens unless it happens on daylight. And you see something on the shadows, you just move to F2 and take a picture. You know what you're doing. I mean, you gotta focus too, but <laughs> that's layers of complexity. Um, but yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Remember those two settings. Uh, it's very important to measure for the skin tones and not for the overall scene. Some people might disagree and it's natural. Some people would say, oh, you know, you gotta take the measure for the whole reading because what happens if the background is completely white or completely black and it looks like crap and whatnot. Well, that depends on what your focus is. My focus when I go out and take pictures in the street is to take pictures of people. So it's obvious that my interest is to expose the image correctly for the skin tones of other people and not for buildings or whatever. If you take more architectural or object kind of uh, pictures, then for sure, take a whole reading of the scenery and then decide what the f-stop will be as, in, as, as the overall exposure. So for example, you can measure the biggest point of highlight and the lowest point of light, and then you take the measurement of both and decide the space in between, right? Um, but I don't do that. Like that's, that's something you would do if you wanna go to landscape photography or you wanna uh, expose by, you know, zones and, I'm not into that. I'm just, I, what I want to do is go outside and take pictures of people and do it as fast and as accurate as I can do it. And for that, I measure it like this. So if you want to take pictures like that, meaning just grabbing moments on the street and not worry too much about the correct exposure of the overall scene, then this way that I'm proposing, it's pretty much the easiest. I've discovered that it's super fast. Besides, you have your hands with you at all times. So if you go on, like, go under a tree, take a measure, go under like broad daylight, take another measure, and you're set. You know exactly the settings that you need to use in order to take pictures of the rest of the people. Unless your skin tone is absolutely different from anybody else, but then you can actually do it anyway. If you know your skin tone and you measure it, and then you get a friend who has a more neutral skin, like if you're too white or too black, uh, <laughs> what do you mean too white or too black? I mean, if you're not like, uh, if your skin tone is too white or too black uh, and compared to the rest of the population that you're gonna take pictures of, Grab a friend or somebody or ask anybody who has a more neutral skin tone or is more comparable to the overall the population you want to take pictures of and measure that person compared to you and check how much is the distance between your skin tone and that person. You, your skin tone might be one stop underexposed or one stop overexposed and then you just compensate for the rest of the people. Like take a measurement, know, okay, if I want to take a picture of that person who's way darker than me, then I'll have to compensate. and at just like one more stop. You know what I mean? The good thing is your hand serves as an element for taking measures of light all the time. And it's like the best thing you can do, just use your hand, take a measure and go on. It's super easy. Um, I don't know, that's all I can say. That's, that's my best advice. If you have something else that we could share, that'll be great. If you know any kind of apps that you wanna share, that'll be great. 
and I guess that's it. Uh, if you have any questions regarding all of this, which I don't know which questions could you have, but just in case, uh, drop them in the comment section and I'll try to help you out the best way I can. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you had an amazing week and I will see you next time with another episode and until then just keep shooting guys.